best on off screen shooter that I ever played with, and probably the best that I ever played in the NBA. And I consider myself the best shooter ever, but there's one guy that tops me. Mm -hmm. And he got underneath my skin, the late great Drazen Petrovic. Drazen Petrovic, born October 22, 1964, died June 7, 1993. Drazen Petrovic was supposed to have been the first Luka Doncic, the hot European name coming into the NBA, bringing his entire cult following to a franchise with the talent to galvanize a fan base, big game ability, and a will to compete. He once demanded a trade from an NBA team because he was tired of playing second fiddle point guard knowing he could prove himself a lot better elsewhere. He was that kind of competitor and had that kind of talent. He also had that it factor in the way he carried himself sort of like what you see in Luka today. But he and Luka's career will most likely go a lot different because of the reasons we're about to talk about. Since a child, he was always the most talented of his pairs and the most competitive, but unlike Luka, Drazen wasn't always given the same opportunity. Still, he became one of the best players in the NBA at the time, even making an All-NBA team before he tragically passed away at 28 years old. NBA players usually talk about him as if his competitiveness was unmatched. Like if it was any European player that was set to make a superstar transition into the NBA, it was going to be him. As far as field goal percentage, his was usually atop the NBA for guards with a career average of over 50%. Three-point shooting? Eh, he's only one of the best three-point shooters of all time with a career average higher than Klay Thompson, Reggie Miller, Ray Allen, and you guessed it, Steph Curry. Numbers that began to take effect in just his second season in the league with a language barrier, different ball, deeper three-point line, and no blueprint as he was the first superstar European-born player to play in the NBA. Before Dirk, Giannis, Parker, Ginobili, Jokic, and once again, you guessed it, Luka. Was he better than Luka? See, that's the thing. Because of these reasons, the sports world was robbed of what this player could do on the basketball court and the barriers he was set to break down for imports of his kind. Euro players had no better representative. From day one, he wasn't afraid of competition and would usually let them know about it during the game as well, even if it was in a language they couldn't understand. Reggie Miller once called him his nemesis and the best shooter he's ever seen. Michael Jordan said he was one of the most fun matchups he's ever had, and John Stockton, who played head-to-head -head, often against Petrovic, admits to being lost on his bench rest watching Petrovic hoop, calling himself a fan. The respect was there, the talent was also. Too bad time had other plans. Rest in peace, Drazen Petrovic. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. You can also send a super thanks by clicking the button below. Enjoy the video. Drazen Petrovic was a 6'5 shooting guard born in Sibenik, Yugoslavia, known as Croatia today. Since a young child, he knew he wanted to play sports because he hated losing and was always looking to beat his older brother at anything he could. Since his older brother Alexander played basketball, young Petro followed suit and by 13 years old, he was beginning to get phenom labels and major minutes with local club team Sibenka. By 15, he made the club's first team and became their star shooting guard. Behind his lead, they made it to the Pan-European Club Final in back-to-back -back years, losing both times, one to a challenge technicality where Petrovic and Sibenka actually won the game, but due to referees accused of misofficiating, the championship was overturned. Sibenka, Petro's team, refused to play in a rematch, so the opposing team was awarded the championship by default. Stunt number one, late to the party. As mentioned, Drazen Petrovic was a first of his kind beginning in the late 70s to do what he was doing with the talent of his level. The first is usually the one to take the arrows as trade-off for forever being crowned the first. 
One arrow Drazen took to his NBA career was getting a late start, not playing in his first NBA game until he was 25 years old. Six years after he was clearly good enough to go straight to the league at 19, and three years after Portland took him 60th overall in the 86 NBA draft of 134 players. He was the fifth European taken in that draft and decided to stay overseas rather than join the league and not have a chance as a third round pick. He spent from 86-87 to 88-89 with his Yugoslavian team where he averaged nearly 40 points a game each year, winning cup championships and scoring 50 points regularly. Finally, in the 89-90 season, Portland was able to get the European Jordan and first Luka on the roster for his rookie season because as Petrovic said, he realized that if he could score 40 points every night in Europe, he wasn't being challenged, so the NBA was the best place for him. But by that time, he was already 25 years old. He had fell all the way to the third round and 60th pick. At that spot, players are usually picked up to be practice players with no real future with the team. With Drajan deciding to stay in Europe, he missed out on possibly being drafted to a better fitting team and a chance to accumulate earlier stats and records he was ready to break. He didn't get the early start Luka Doncic got, but he was every bit good enough to. Stunt number two, being drafted by Portland. Portland, however, wasted another nearly two years of his start playing him limited minutes off the bench as a spot-up shooter, telling him directly that he was to receive a pass ball and go straight into his shooting motion, nothing else. Knowing he was more than that, Petrovic requested a trade from the Blazers 38 games into the 1991 season. 20 of those games he didn't even play. On his way out, he let it be known. I have nothing to say to Rick Adelman, his coach at the time, anymore, and vice versa. 18 months have passed by, too long. I have to leave to prove how much I'm worth. Never in my life did I sit on the bench and I don't intend to do that in Portland. His request was granted and he was sent to the New Jersey Nets during the 1991 season. The last 43 games, he came off the bench and was an immediate impact averaging 12.9 points a game in 20 minutes, shooting the best 3-point percentage on the team. With Reggie Theus leaving to play in Italy the next season, Petrovic became the team's leading scorer and they made the playoffs after 5 years not doing so. In his final season, 92-93, he averaged 22.3 points a game, again leading the Nets to the playoffs and making an All-NBA team. Once he was in the right situation, he flourished immediately. In his four years in the league, he led all shooting guards in field goal percentage and three-point percentage, including Michael Jordan and Reggie Miller. He's the best shooter in Portland history and ranked third best New Jersey net ever. Makes you wonder, with a different team taking him, who knows the start he could have had. Already having missed time early overseas, he didn't have that extra one and a half seasons to waste. Stunt number three, passing away in his prime. Even though Drazen Petrovic was one of the greatest shooters in history, his skills would often go unnoticed in the ultra-competitive 90s as the best player in the world looking as contrast as ever to Drazen. You could say he was before his time. Had he been in today's era, he would be celebrated more than Steph Curry for his deep shooting and release that Reggie Miller called the quickest he's ever seen. Someone else that didn't notice or appreciate that he shot mid-40s from three in back-to-back -back seasons was All-NBA and leading scorer on the New Jersey Nets were the New Jersey Nets. Reportedly, they weren't all too sure whether or not to extend Drazen's contract, which didn't happen fast enough and infuriated Petrovic during the summer of 93 who said the lack of recognition made him want to leave altogether and play in Europe where Greek teams were offering big money. 
While driving back to Croatia, instead of flying, probably to blow off steam, he fell asleep while his girlfriend was driving. At around 5 p.m. June 7th, a semi-truck lost control after being cut off by another driver on the other side of the median, swerved directly into Petrovic's vehicle, killing him instantly as he was ejected from the car and sustained grave head injuries. He was just 28 years old and his entire NBA future ahead of him, where he would have no question been one of the best players in the league for at least the next five to seven years. Truly a sad way to lose a legend. All in all, Drazen Petrovic was and will be remembered as one of the greatest European players ever, and before Luka, the best European guard ever in the league. Doncic may end up more accomplished, but Drazen will always be the first. Once again, rest in peace to Drazen Petrovic.